Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Science. Today we are going to be looking at one of the new blocks in the 1.5 update and that is the Minecraft Comparator, this block right here. Now it has two main uses, it can compare signal strengths and give you an output based on how it compares them and also it can check the contents of a block that has inventory space and turn that into a signal strength as well. So in case you've never seen this before, this is the crafting recipe right here and that will make you just one of those little comparator blocks. So first of all I'm going to start off by explaining how it compares signal strength. So the comparator has two inputs, it has its primary input and its secondary input. The primary is the one that comes in from the back here and the secondary one comes in from the side and it has two modes in which to compare the signal. It has the compare mode which we're looking at right now and if we right click on it and turn on the diode at the front it goes into subtract mode which we're going to cover in a moment. So before I explain how the compare mode works there's one thing that I need to point out that I think is quite important to know. Now let's turn on this one and um, this is the lowest signal strength that we can have. If we were to add another block to the side here and put a piece of redstone on it the signal strength would not carry on to the next piece of redstone. However when you use a comparator what it does is it takes the signal strength of the primary input and passes it in front of it. So one other piece of redstone and there would be no power on it but because we have a comparator it takes the um, the signal strength of the one behind it and passes it into the one in front of it which is quite important because that can be very useful when using these comparators. So how does the compare mode work? Well we take the primary input and we compare it to the secondary one so let's start off with a signal strength like that you can see that it doesn't light up all of these lamps and these go around in order so these are the first ones then the four at the back and then down the side here and the reason I've done it like that is so we don't have a long line of lamps that we have to you know, fly up in the air to see. Um, so there's our primary input powering the comparator and now we need to take our secondary input which comes in from the side and compare signal strength. So let's go with something that is higher. You can see when we have a higher signal strength coming in from the side it just turns off the output completely and that's when it's in the compare mode. So any of these that are higher it's just going to turn off the output. Now let's put in the equal amount which is that one over the far side there and you can see that the signal strength stays as normal so when it's higher it turns off the output and when it's equal to it keeps the output of the primary input and let's go with something even lower you can see if it's equal to or lower then it's going to keep the primary input as its output so let's take a look at subtract mode to do that we have to put the comparator into it so we right click on it and the diode at the front will come on uh, indicating that we are in subtract mode. So like before we're going to be comparing the signal strength of our primary input to our secondary input except this time we'll be subtracting the secondary input from the signal strength of the primary one. So that means like before if we put in a higher signal strength then our output is nothing so in compare mode you can see it's the same however the first difference appears when we put in an equal signal strength so in subtract mode we are taking away um, the same value as our primary input with our secondary input so the output is zero whereas in compare mode I uh, would actually keep our secondary uh, sorry our primary input as our output so when we go lower than the value of our primary input with our secondary input and um, because it's subtracting it means our output will be the value of the difference between the two and um, so if we go two blocks lower we'll have an output of two and free so that's probably very basic to understand I've tried to make it as clear as possible but it is really simple we're simply taking the number value of our signal strength which is how far away it is from the comparator with that of our primary input so to simplify and summarize everything that I've just explained if our primary input equals A and our secondary equals B then in compare mode if B is greater than A the output is zero if B is equal to or lower than A the output is A and in subtract mode if B is equal to or higher then the output is zero and if B is lower its value is subtracted from A. So one last thing about the comparator that I want to add is it's kind of like a repeater in a sense that it will extend the signal but not the signal strength so the signal strength here is the same behind as it is in front and this means if we're to take the comparator we can actually extend our output signal just by one block by doing that which could be very useful um, when you're coming up with a contraption that uses these comparators so that is something to remember right there. 
So the second feature of the comparator is its ability to detect how many items are inside a block that has inventory space and then it can turn that into signal strength. So I started off my investigation into this by finding out what blocks it would actually pull a signal strength from and which ones it wouldn't. So for example the ender chest doesn't work but also these other blocks have technically inventory space as well but it doesn't work with the enchanting table, the beacon, the anvil or the furnace minecart and also I tried it with the uh, cauldron as well, it doesn't have inventory space but you can put water into it and you get no comparator signal from that. So these are all of the blocks that do work with the comparator and down the end here we have the minecart chest and the minecart hopper which are both sitting on detector rails and they work exactly the same as the chest and the hopper but each of these blocks they do have a different inventory size uh, which made me curious as to how this worked if some of these would work differently with the comparators to others. Um, I can tell you now that they all work the same but because they have different inventory sizes it means you need to use some maths to calculate um, how it converts them into signal strength. So I've made this little mathematic formula down here which I think is quite easy to follow and it will allow you to figure out how many items you're putting into one of these and what signal strength you will get from it. So first of all let's start off with the inventory space of that item itself being the hopper here. Um, that has five slots which can hold up to 64 items so um, this is the inventory space that we're calculating here we take 5 and multiply it by 64 so if you were doing a dropper that would be 9 times 64 and that gives you 320 and so that is our inventory space now the second one I wasn't sure what to call it so I called it X so X is the amount of items that we're going to put into the hopper uh, divided by the total inventory space which is that number just there so that's we're going to put in a stack of items that's 64 divided by 320 which equals 0 0.2 so x is 0 0.2 and then what we do for the last part of our little formula here is we take x which is 0 0.2 and multiply it by 14 which gives us 2.8 then we add 1 to that 2.8 and we get 3.8 so what we've calculated there is that the stack of items which is that bit there that we've put into the hopper will give us a signal strength of 3.8 so let's start off with the first item that's one thing you have to do with this formula um, we've deducted one by adding one at the end here because the first item that we put in will give us a signal strength of one and then when we put in the next uh, sorry that's the wrong one a stack of items we will get a signal strength of 3.8 so you can see we've got three of them lit and then there's the 0.8 it doesn't round it up so when we put in a few more items we'll go over that and you can see there is lit the fourth um, light so now we can calculate the amount of items that we're putting in and what signal strength that will give us but maybe you want to say I want this signal strength and I need to know how many items that is well my maths is very rusty I'm fairly sure this is 100% correct however this next one I think is just a close estimate so I'm hoping someone out there will be able to correct me so I can update it so there'll be an annotation on the screen and also check the description box for a better formula than this because I'm expecting someone will come up with this um, but what this will do is it will allow us to say I want a signal strength of 5 and how many items do I need to put into it so we take the inventory space which we've calculated over here is 320 and we take away one from that number which gives us 319 and then we take that number and divide it by 15 which gives us 21.2 so if I put in one item that's for our first signal strength you can see there then I'm going to put in another 21 and it's not until we go over that so it's 21.2 or greater that we then get our next piece of signal strength but like I said I think my maths is probably wrong on this so I'm hoping someone will be able to correct me so we can know the correct formula. So in this game there are three different types of items we have the ones that stack into 64, the ones that stack into 16 and then items like the potion which you can only have one of at a time and do not stack and so you may be wondering how do you calculate that into this formula well it's quite simple actually you treat this like it was um, 64 items as you would the eggs you would treat each one like it was one so if you had just two eggs and uh, then you would count that as eight so when you're doing these formulas down here and you're taking the amount of items that you're putting into it and then that 64 would be the equivalent of one potion so if you want to put in two potions then you're going to count that as 128 and you would do the same thing with the brewing stand even though these can only accept potions you would calculate them as if they hold 64 items and then the items that you put into them being potions would be worth 64 each 
So there is one exception to all of this and that is the jukebox. The jukebox will output a signal strength based on what record it is that you put into it. So from left to right down here, the first record you see will give you a signal strength of 1 going all the way up to 12. So that is it for this video. I feel like I covered everything there was to do with comparators, or at least everything I could think of. And if you want to watch the previous episode of Minecraft Science, there is a link on the screen. We covered the nether quartz on that, which is a key ingredient of making the comparator. And also there's a link to the myth-busting series, which is the world that we're in right now. So as always, thank you very much for watching this video, and I will catch you next time.